interactive table of contents. In this part, I am going to show you what it is an interactive table of contents. And if you are not using the video that has the interactive table of contents, I'm going to give you an example of what it is and what are the benefits of using one. This is one of my own projects for my students and I teach them how to download media legally from the internet and how to edit it with an open source software. This video has an interactive table of contents on the left side and as you move up and down with your cursor you're going to have the ability to select any of the different sections of the video. So for example I'm going to come over here to basic operations in Audacity and I'm going to click. So now what I'm going to do is just expand the window and I'm going to do some basic operations by... So basically what the table of contents allows you to do is to select any of the different parts of the video and it would immediately move to that yeah, section. To do the last part of the typical operations in this interactive table of contents is very useful for students because they can move around the content without actually having to sit through the different parts. In other words, in the same way that a book works, in which you can move quickly from chapter to chapter, and even within a chapter you can move quickly from section to section, when you provide this interactive table of contents to your students, they're going to be able to have more or less the same browsing behavior and specific use behavior of the different parts of your video. So that's why it is important to give an interactive table of contents. Another benefit is to provide the students a means to have a reference material that they can use at a later time if they have forgotten different areas of the video or different parts of the video. So let's imagine that now we are far into the future, your students are studying for your exam and they don't remember specifically how to trim and add a silence in this specific application. So they can go back to the video and without having to sit through all of its parts, which would make it very difficult, they can just go to the trimming and adding silence section. This one over here is... So this is why it is important to create this interactive table of contents to increase the usability of your productions. Very well, now that we know what an interactive table of contents is, I'm going to show you how to place markers. And markers are going to be the way you name the different sections in your interactive table of contents. In other words, these titles over here for the interactive table of contents is what we are going to type in the different markers throughout our interactive authoring of the video. Very well, here it is Camtasia. And right now I have the markers option open, but I'm going to close it so I can show you how to open it back again. I'm going to move to this icon over here on the left side of the screen. And in there I'm going to be able to see that there's an option to make the marker view be hidden or be shown. So if you press Ctrl M or you click here, you're going to be able to make that marker view disappear or appear. Very well, so this is the project that you saw a few moments ago and this is how I named the different sections in my video. One of the things that I like is creating a marker that will be called overview and normally that marker is pulled all the way to the left side of the video so it can be at the top of your table of contents. So for example I have this overview option over here learning by doing and basically as your video moves forward from one section to the other it registers that it's located in that area and will also provide a means for your students to be able to move quickly now the question is how do I create these markers that will end up being our interactive table of contents for that, I'm going to create a brand new project so we don't have these markers over here and I'm going to show you how to go about it. And there we go. We have an empty timeline with no markers around. 
So the very first marker, the one that I always call overview, um, I'm going to place that at the very beginning. But the best way to place that marker is by choosing a point in the middle and clicking on the M key in your keyboard. So right now you're not seeing this, but I am pressing on the M key on the keyboard. And at that moment, the marker appears on my screen. And this is the right moment for me to rename this marker to whatever I want to appear in the interactive table of contents. And I press enter. So that's going to be my overview marker. And I'm going to click on this little arrow over here, a rhomboid. And I am going to move it to the left. So it goes all the way to the very beginning of the video. There we go. So whenever we create our interactive table of contents and someone wants to go to the very beginning, they can do so by clicking on the overview entry in the interactive table of contents. Now I'm going to move to another section. I'm just going to grab it from anywhere in here and I'm going to place the head of the program where I want to create the next marker. And here I go again. I'm going to press the M key to create the next marker. At that moment, I can uh, rename it in whatever way I want, as I did before. And I'm going to name it choosing files for your production and so on. I can keep on creating as many different markers I need in order for this video to be navigated in a quick way or for your students to find information quickly. If you want to delete any of these markers that you have already corrected, what you need to do is to come over here, click on the actual marker that you want to delete. It's going to be very fine clicking and right click and you can delete that specific marker. One of the things that you can also see is that you can rename it or you can delete all markers in a single go. Once that you have created all the markers that you need for your interactive table of contents, you need to render the video in a way that will incorporate that interactive table of contents and it will actually change your video according to what the user clicks on. So right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on rendering a video with an interactive table of contents. And one of the things that I'm going to ask you to pay attention to is what is the size of that table of contents and what is the size of the video that you recorded. In this case, my case, I chose a fairly small area. This is the width of the interactive table of contents. And then I chose a lot larger area for my video. In the case of this production, the video and the table of contents exceed the amount of space that I have in this projector. But one way to fix that, and you can communicate this to your students, is by clicking on the expand to full screen option down here. And then the video and the table of contents are going to be re-rendered at that moment for them to fit perfectly in your student's screen. So I'm going to let go of this again, get out of here. And now I'm going to go through the different steps of creating that table of contents. So we're going to go to produce and share. In this drop down menu, we are going to select costume production settings. We're going to go to next. We're going to set the MP4 option. And this is when we can start selecting the different options for our production. And it will start by you designing this part, which is the controller. And if you want to make a transparent, classic, different types of controllers that you might have for your video, you can choose to auto hide them or not. They will appear or disappear or stay there all the time and what are the actions at the very end of your video, which you can choose to go to a URL and things like that. Now, in the size tab, you are going to be able to see what would be the different sizes of the video if, it's, if it were to be embedded and if it were to be placed by itself. If both of them are present, you might have both in your production. 
Now on the options tab you're going to find the options to add or take away the table of contents. In this case you want to have this checked because we are actually working on that. So having done these changes and paying attention to the numbers that we have here, I'm going to go and create this video with an interactive table of contents. In order for you to create this interactive table of contents, necessarily you're going to have to create HTML files that will be placed next to your video files. And all of the files that were created in the process of rendering your video, all of them as a whole, have to be uploaded to a regular server where the HTML is going to help and make that interactive table of contents work. So just be aware that this is going to come with an entire set of HTML related files that are going to make your video functional. Once that, that is said, you can go to next. And in here you have a different set of options. In this case, you're going to be able to number the different markers that you have and this is just an option for you to consider. I have no specific uh, recommendations in this regard. You can take away the numbers and just leave the entries as you wrote them. One of the things that you can select too is where would you like to have this interactive table of contents? Would you like to have it on the left side? Would you like to to have it on the right side and if you would like to have text and the different thumbnails attached to the interactive table of contents or just one of the two. So I'm going to select text only for my case but remember this is up to you and in order for you to create a different file with a different type of um, interactive table of contents you just need to select something different. Uh, render it, see how it works, and if you're happy, well, maybe that's the option that you want to take. Very well, in my case, I'm going to leave fix left. I'm going to select just the text, and I'm going to leave that as it is. Finally, I'm going to select a place where this can go example interactive table of contents and I'm going to see all the different files that are going to be created for it to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. I'm going to pause the video at this point in time. The table of contents that I'm creating at this moment is very different than this one. It only has two entries at the top, but it had the main intention of showing you how this process takes place. So I'm going to pause at this moment and I'm going to wait for the process to finish to show you how my video was rendered. And we are almost there. When the production is done, you're going to get to see the production results window and all the files that were created for your video to play well. And now I'm going to open the production folder so you can get to see them all individually. This is our video file and if you wanted you can upload this file to YouTube and it work in the same way as the other renderings that we have been doing in the past. But if you upload all of these other files to a regular server, they're going to interact with your video file as to provide an interactive table of contents. And here it is. Now when you render these type of files, you're going to get this same window from Camtasia. So you will get this same type of message and you're going to be able to play your video but the interactive table of content is not going to be there just yet. So I'm going to do what they ask and I'm going to upload this video to a server to see the results of my interactive table of contents production. So I have opened up my program to FTP files to the server. I'm going to grab all of the files that I obtained from the production process and I'm going to grab all of them and bring them into that folder in the server. The smallest files are going to go through very quickly and the biggest file will take a lot longer to upload and that biggest file is your video. I'm going to pause for this to finish once more and I'm going to get back 
to the recording as soon as we are close to 99% or something like that. And it is ready. The file that at this moment you need to pay attention to is the HTML file in that folder. And this is the file that you're going to need to share with your students in order for them to have access to your video with the interactive table of contents. So I'm going to grab this unique resource location and I'm going to bring it to my browser. Learning by doing. So now the interactive table of contents is going to be located in this icon over here and you're going to be able to move it inward or outward as your video plays. This is a different setting than the one that I showed you in my first digital media primer example because I used Camtasia 7 when I created this video. So now things are a little bit different and in order for you to see your interactive table of contents you will have to move to this area and to activate it or deactivate it. And it's going to work in the exact same way whenever you click here you're going to move to the next section and you're going to be able to start playing Digital your video audio. at that moment. So that's how you incorporate an interactive table of contents to your video.